Today we're going to go over polar and rectangular conversions and how to graph polar points. Remember that polar coordinates are in the form r theta, so the radius r is the distance from the origin and theta is your angle between the initial side and the terminal side. If we're looking at r equals 3, that would be this concentric circle, and then we'll go up positive pi over 6. To graph 4 comma pi, we'll go to the circle with radius 4, and our angle would be pi. To graph 3, negative 5 pi 6, we'll go to 3, and then negative angle indicates a clockwise motion rather than counterclockwise, so we'll go down 5 pi over 6. For a negative value of r, first find the value of 2 comma 3 pi halves, and then you will reflect that point over the pole. 2, 3 pi halves is here, but to reflect this point about the pole, it should now be here. Negative 2, 3 pi halves is equivalent to positive 2 pi halves. For the rectangular point, negative 1, root 3, we're going to write the polar form according to these conditions. To begin, I'm going to graph what this would look like. I'm going to use the relationship x squared plus y squared equals r squared. x is negative 1 and y is root 3. r is equal to plus or minus 2. So when they're looking for an r greater than 0, we'll use positive 2. And when they're looking for an r less than 0, we'll use negative 2. I also want to solve for theta. I've been given the y and the x. Tangent of theta is equal to y over x. So tangent of theta is equal to root 3 over negative 1. We're looking for the angle for which tangent of theta is equal to negative root 3. That would be at 2 pi thirds and 5 pi thirds. Quadrant 2 and quadrant 4 are where tangent is negative. So the first one is pretty easy. I'll take the positive r value of 2 and a positive theta, I would use 2 pi thirds. If I use 5 pi thirds, I'll get to the fourth quadrant and my point is in the second quadrant. Again, r is greater than 0, so we'll use 2 for r, but now we want a negative value of theta. Neither of our thetas are negative. Negative theta would be this orange angle. So 2 pi minus 2 pi thirds is what we would be looking at. And that would be negative 5 pi thirds. Now I want an r value that's negative. And that's going to change what I want to put my angle as. If having a negative radius reflects our point about the pole, then we want a theta value that brings us to 5 pi thirds so that when we reflect it over the pole, we'll get to the second quadrant. For it to be greater than 1, I'm looking at this angle. What do you know? That's 5 pi thirds. Now I want theta to be negative, so I will use this angle. That would be negative pi thirds. What about if we're going to change a polar point into rectangular form? When we're doing conversions from rectangular to polar, it's helpful to use x squared plus y squared equals r squared. And to find theta, it's helpful that tangent theta is y over x. When we're going from polar to rectangular, x is equal to r cosine theta and y is equal to r sine theta. This is r and this is theta. So in order to find x, I'll put r cosine theta. To find y, I'll put r sine theta. And if you thought about that more intuitively, or if you visualized what it looks like graphically, then you would have been able to see, okay, yeah, that is at negative 2, 0, because it's 2 away from the origin, but it's on the x-axis. Now let's change the point negative 3, 3 to polar form. We've been given x and y. We need to find r and theta. First, we'll use x squared plus y squared equals r squared.
tangent is equal to negative 1 in the second quadrant and the fourth quadrant at the pi fourths angles there. Let's create four polar coordinates that are equivalent to the rectangular coordinate negative 3, 3. When r is positive 3 root 2 and we want a positive theta, that would be 3 pi fourths. Again, if we want now a negative theta, that would be negative 5 pi fourths. If r is negative, we want to reach the opposite side of the pole. So a positive angle would be 7 pi fourths, and a negative angle would be negative pi fourths. Let's convert rectangular equations into polar form. Remember that y is equal to r sine theta. Solve for r if possible. Using the reciprocal identity, 1 over sine theta will be cosecant theta. For number 6, I will replace x with r cosine theta and y with r sine theta. Factor out r. And then solve for r. For number 7, remember that x squared plus y squared is r squared. And then I'll replace this x with an r cosine theta. This could be factored to find two values for r. Using the zero product property, r could be 0 or r could be positive 2 cosine theta. When we convert from polar to rectangular, we're going to use the same conversion equations. I've been given r, so I'm going to write x squared plus y squared equals r squared, which is just the equation of a circle. For number 9, it's really more helpful when I have an r squared, because then I can replace it with an x squared plus y squared. So I'm going to not square both sides, I'm going to multiply both sides by r. Why not square both sides? because I also want an r on this side, because if I have an r cosine theta, then I can replace that with an x. Let's rearrange this so we have a better idea of what we're working with. I'm going to complete the square as far as the x's are concerned, so that I can write x as a quantity squared. Remember, this is what goes here. All right, this is a circle centered at 3 halves, comma, 0, with a radius of 3 halves. For r equals 2 cosecant theta, I'm going to rewrite cosecant theta as 1 over sine theta. If I multiply both sides by sine theta, oh my goodness, r sine theta is y. Let's sketch some polar graphs. Some common polar graphs would be our circles. Our circles are r equals d cosine theta. If d is positive, your circle is going to be on the positive side of that axis. If d is negative, then your circle will be on the negative side of whichever axis you have symmetry on and that is referring to d as the diameter of your circle. Use a calculator on part a of each problem. You're welcome to use a calculator. I'm going to show you how to do it by hand. 2 cosine theta. d, our diameter, is 2, and our axis of symmetry is the x-axis. For part b, d equals 5, and we have y-axis symmetry, because it is sine theta. For rose petal curves, a is the maximum radius possible. We are going to have n petals if n is odd, and 2n petals if n is even. Cosine indicates x-axis symmetry, and sine indicates y-axis symmetry. n equals 2 is even which means this rose curve will have four petals. A is 3, 
which means our max radius is 3. And cosine means we have x-axis symmetry. Those four petals will be on the axes. For part B, n is 3, which makes it odd, so we're only going to have three petals. Our max radius is 4, and due to it being sine, we have y-axis symmetry. Or, to figure out which one, I'm going to plug in pi halves for theta. That would be asking me to find sine of 3 pi halves. Sine of 3 pi halves is negative 1, so negative 4. That means this is our curve. Now it's time to graph a lemison. Lemisins can have an inner loop, be cardioid or heart shaped, have a dimple, or have basically a circle that was just slightly flattened. This is a cosine graph, which usually looks like this, that has been shifted up to and has an amplitude of three and is reflected. So it's gonna look like that. It's just cosine of theta, so we're not looking at any phase shift or horizontal stretch or shrink. If your shift is 2, that is the new midline. So our amplitude is 3, and since this is reflected, we're going to start at negative 3. We don't have to even put the curve, but I'm going to take these five points and translate them onto a polar graph. How am I going to do that? I'm going to use the x-axis as theta and the y-axis as r. Negative 1, 0 would be at 1, 0, but reflected over the pole. 2 pi halves is a radius of 2, but an angle of pi halves. 5 pi would be, have a radius of 5 and a point at the angle pi. 2, 3 pi halves has a radius of 2 and at the angle 3 pi halves. Negative 1, 2 pi is the point at 1, 2 pi reflected over, so back to the original starting point. This is a lemison with an inner loop. A lemison with an inner loop always goes through the origin. To graph B, our midline, our vertical shift, is 3. And our amplitude is 3 and it's sine, so we're starting at the midline. Transfer the rectangular points onto the polar graph. If you do want to add in any other points, you could always plug in like pi fourths. And pi fourths looks like it's giving us like approximately five. That would be five and then pi fourths. And this one happens to be a a cardioid. Go ahead and use a calculator to graph your limniscate. I'm not sure if it's limniscate or limniscate, but I like saying limniscate because it sounds like limp biscuit. This is basically an infinity symbol with a loop in quadrant one and a symmetrical loop in quadrant three.